Hey, what's up? Welcome back to round two of book recommendations for you. Last time when I hit 100K, um, I did 100 specific book recommendations where I asked you guys on my Instagram story just to give me your most extremely, oddly, strangely specific book recommendations. And so I did 100 and now for 200K, thank you so much. We're gonna do two, we're not gonna do 200, we're gonna do 105. You get five extra this time. This is gonna be a super long video. I'm not gonna really go into the synopsis of each one. Maybe I'll just say one strange remark about each book for each of your very specific recommendations. As well, I do wanna mention, I have not read all of these 105 books, but I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what's out there, of what book like is the best for this recommendation, even if I hadn't read it since my work life, my YouTube life, um, my academic life, and my hobby pleasure reading life is all centered around books. So I'm pretty confident in giving you guys these and I listen to people talk about books all day. So let's just get right into it with the first request. Request number one is a book that feels like warm covers when it is cold outside. For this one, I'm gonna recommend to you The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. I read this last Christmas, so good. I would also recommend watching the movie because that feels like warm covers when it's cold outside. So heartwarming, so wonderful, but you also get that snowy feel. For found family comfort, I'm gonna recommend Komi Can't Communicate by Tomohito Oda. I love this manga and as well the anime just came out and I started watching it and it is so beautiful. It is about Komi who has a communication disorder and her goal is to make a hundred friends. And so she just starts to like really find her family at her school with like this very close knit group of friends that expands and expands and expands over the series. It is so beautiful, so gorgeous and it's just so heartwarming and it really makes you feel like she's finding her people. For a classic, I couldn't put it down. Um, I'm gonna say The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This one, a lot of people don't like, but for me, I couldn't put it down because number one, it's so short and I wanted to know like what was happening since this is a book that revolves around a haunted house and people studying the haunted house. I was really unsure what was happening and I just wanted to get to the end to like see what would actually happen because it's kind of a really slow burning gothic spooky horror book and the ending did not um, disappoint me. It was very crazy. Something morbid and bizarre, but also not too scary, enjoyable. For this one, I'm gonna say In Watermelon Sugar by Richard Brodigan because this starts out as kind of a utopian vision. It's in the counterculture movement. It was written during the counterculture movement, I believe. Um, but it slowly descends into very unsettling territory and it gets really morbid, really disturbing. Um, but it's still really enjoyable because the writing is so nice. Someone wants something to binge read to escape my final year of uni burnout and existential dread. Ooh. I'm gonna say A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Rosanna Brown. This is really, 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 really good. Young adult fantasy. Um, it surprised me so much. I gave this four stars. I just thought it was so well written. I fell in love with all of the characters and the characters as well are dealing with some quite heavy issues in their life, whether that's chronic pain or anxiety. Um, they're just having a really tough time and like just seeing them, I just related to them so much and it's just such a good fantasy book and I read it so quickly. The second book just came out, so this one. A book that captures the feelings of a rainy day. I'm gonna say The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. This was beautiful. I give this five stars. The whole book is like pretty much set in a graveyard. It's also a retelling of The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling and the whole thing is just taken over by this gloomy, dark, shadowy, Halloween spooky atmosphere that just feels like you're walking through rain for the whole entire book. It's glorious. Someone wants dreamy and gory allusions to fulfill my gothic soul. I'm gonna say The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil. <gasps> so good, so creepy. This is set in Victorian London and we're following two sisters. One of them wants to be a painter and so she starts to apprentice um, with this pre-Raphaelite painter. And there's also this man who like collects things. He likes to collect animals. It's kind of like a taxidermy, um, vaguely serial killer-ish vibes, but like the gothicness and the creepiness and the whole atmosphere of unease combines so beautifully with the painting and like the art and the pre-Raphaelite school. And it's just, it was so good. A book where fish or any kind of amphibian fall from the sky. Oh no. Ooh. Okay. Kafka on the Shore by Murakami. We have, what is it, sardines? Sardines and something else falls from the sky because it's 
magical realism. Uh, I haven't read this one yet, but I really, really want to. Uh, I think this is a lot of people's favorite Murakami book, so Kafka on the Shore has you covered for your falling fish fetish. <laughs> that shelf is not instilling me with a lot of faith. Number nine, someone would like books to soothe heartbreak. For this one, I'm gonna recommend a book I currently have on hold, which is a new release this year. It's called You've Reached Sam. And this one is like the ultimate heartbreak because this is about a couple where the boyfriend passes away, he dies, and um, our protagonist is grieving and calls his phone just to hear like his voice on his voice um, message system. But he actually picks up and answers and like I think helps her eventually get through the grief and the heartbreak of losing him and like finding herself and just grief and sorrow. This sounds like it's gonna absolutely destroy me, but at the same time, I think it's gonna leave you with hopefully a little bit of healing in your heart as well. A book that is a retelling of an ancient story, but not a Greek or Roman myth. For this one, I'm gonna say um, Lilani of the Distant Sea. I read this middle grade book in 2019. It is inspired by a number of different Filipino myths, folklore, um, just mythology and stories and everything like that. And it is about Lilani, who is our protagonist, essentially going to this place that the people from her village don't ever go to and like encountering and exploring what is out there. Really fun, really sweet. And I also learned so much about different folklore and stuff like that. Number 11 is the perfect book for Christmas and to be cozy when it's snowing outside. I do have a whole winter and snowy and ice book recommendations video coming, but for this one, oh, I have to go running a bit one second. I am back with The Enchanted Sonata by Heather Dixon Woolwork. This is a retelling of The Nutcracker. It's also beautiful, um, if you can see that. So it's perfect for Christmas. It is. It just looks so cozy. I have this on my December TBR, so I'm gonna be getting to this so soon. I have waited so many months to pick this up. I'm so excited, so. The Enchanted Sonata. Number 12 is lesbian romance that awakens butterflies in your stomach. I'm gonna recommend One Last Stop because a bunch of my friends have been reading this. This is about our protagonist who meets a girl on the subway, but the girl that she kind of starts to develop feelings for and she has some conversations with on the subway ends up being a girl who is like trapped in time on the subway and she's originally from the 1970s. So this one definitely has a good romance, but also with some cool um, side facets as well. Okay, so I would like a book where the protagonist's actions progressively get worse and worse. For this one, I'm gonna say The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I read this this year. I, mm, I hated this book, but I know a lot of people love it. So many people could love it. This is about Theo Decker. Um, his mother dies in, a explo yes, in an explosion at an art gallery and he eventually grows up to slide into this world of crime, but it's like this very just like roller coaster. You're just going up a roller coaster of like the actions of his life and they just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And you just want to scream at him this whole book. He's completely hopeless, very nihilistic. Um, and it's just really hard to watch him like progressively direct his life's course towards what can only end in like disaster or tragedy. A book by a famous author that is often outshone by their better known books is actually one I'm currently reading because I'm currently reading Resurrection by Leo Tolstoy, which I didn't even know existed until Carolyn and I put together our Dickens versus Tolstoy book club. I had no idea Resurrection was a book that even existed in the world because of course, um, I just always read, you know, Anna Karenina, I'd known of War and Peace, um, but Resurrection, which is his final novel, never even heard of. So this is one we're currently reading if you guys want to join in too, but definitely this one because I had not even heard of this and Tolstoy is such a major author that I didn't even know this existed and I was very shocked. A book that reminds me of the color of burgundy or maroon. This is such a nice one. I'm gonna say A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett because Burgundy Maroon to me is like, it's very comforting. It feels like a warm hug on a cold day. It also reminds me of hot chocolate or winter. Um, gives me some like Weasley jumper vibes and the little princess to me is just like comfort, imagination, food. This is a really, really sweet story about a girl named Sarah 
and like her trials growing up. It's also about the power of imagination. It is just gorgeous, so cozy. And it feels like wrapping yourself in a burgundy blanket. A lot of people, a ton of people ask for this one, a book that makes me feel like I'm in a cabin in a huge fuzzy blanket with the fireplace crackling. Um, the winter rex room I have coming is gonna have like so many books like that, but the one I wanted to put on here that isn't in that video is The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. I love this so much. You got the snow, you have talking animals, you have demons, you're following Lyra, who is this girl who's living in Oxford. It just like feels like all of the cool academia winter parts of Oxford and then eventually you follow her because she is chasing her uncle up north because he is an explorer in the Arctic. There's a lot of like shady things going on up there that shouldn't be happening and it just has like every element ever. It's so cozy, but at the same time, there's mystery. It makes you just want to stay in bed and read this like beautiful book all day. So The Golden Compass. A book with a character who actually has a healthy lifestyle. I'm going to say Anne of Green Gables because I feel like she just has a really like not only physically healthy, you know, she's always eating healthy food and stuff, but I just feel like her way of like mentally tackling the world, approaching the world, um, approaching relationships is very human and it's like very healthy in the way that she grieves and the way that she uses the power of imagination like she is able to kind of lift herself out of whatever is going on in her life and appreciate kind of what's going on around her but also see like the world as it is while being able to engage with the imaginative layer that like helps to cope with whatever she's you know got going on in her life so i feel like this one and i just took so much inspiration um and this book did do wonders for my mental health too so and a book for the Mandalorian, aka you're, you're a hermit and just need to feel something for once. For this one, I'm going to say The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Uh, I didn't really love this book. I thought it was pretty average, but so many people adore this. It just got picked up, I believe, to be a movie. But Addie LaRue, to me, is quite similar to The Mandalorian because she is cursed with uh, immortality, but no one can remember her. No one can remember her name. Um, as soon as she like vanishes from your line of sight, you forget her. And so she leaves. She leads this very solitary life, just kind of going through the world, being an immortal being who's very lonely. Um, but she eventually finds someone who can remember her and gets a friend. And it is very emotional. And at the end of the day, it is about connection. Am I right? A book that sounds like bossa nova music is playing in the background, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Um, if I'm not mistaken, bossa nova was kind of invented and came to be in the 1950s. Um, and I don't know, I can just imagine it in the background of Breakfast at Tiffany's. A novel like The Broken Wings. Where is The Broken Wings? Like The Broken Wings by Gibran. Oh, this is so good. This is a tragic love story, so I'm gonna recommend Atonement because I think they have quite similar things going on um, in terms of love and relationships and stuff like that. This is very beautiful lyrical writing. Um, and so many people get so emotional with atonement. So I think these two have some good things in common. Someone would like dark, a mystery kind of feel with an apothecary setting. Um, I have recently been seeing this book pop up everywhere. So I'm going to recommend The Last Apothecary because this is all set um, and centered around an apothecary shop where a bunch of women, I believe this in, is inspired by a true story actually. Um, I might be mistaken though, so don't like quote me on that, but they all um, poison or start to harm their abusive husbands who come back from the war and it's all set it's like a mystery dark vibe for sure and it's all set around this apothecary shop so perfect a book that has a super strong weather motif throughout that makes you want to write an essay oh my gosh definitely 100 snow country by yasunari kawabata i did like a video essay of sorts on this just because this inspired me so much um as you can imagine snow is just such a rampant theme throughout the whole book it provides a lot of the atmosphere and like um the pathetic fallacy and stuff like that it's just gorgeous it's layered all throughout the book it's set in one of the snowiest regions on earth as well in japan so snow country a book or series for people who reread harry potter every year definitely morgan crow or the trials of morgan crow by jessica townsend this is probably the middle grade slash children's book that has most reminded me of Harry Potter um, in a good way because we follow Morgan, who is kind of like a chosen one, but it's a bit more subdued than that. She gets whisked into this other world um, called Never, 
more and then she has to compete in some trials and stuff like that to be admitted into the society called the wondrous society and it just had so many aspects of harry potter including the magic um she's kind of staying at this hotel which had a lot of like cool things that reminded me of stuff that hogwarts has just like weird magical aberrations and stuff like that and then there is the villain who was kind of reminiscent of voldemort for me so morgan crow something that will make even grumpy dostoevsky smile <laughs> Honestly, don't know how anyone can not smile at my neighbor, Totoro, by Miyazaki. Um, come on, come on. This book will absolutely steal your heart. And I also think that Dostoevsky would appreciate a lot of what is explored in here, namely grief and loss and dealing with parental absence in your life, moving to a new place for the first time, haunted house aspects and stuff like that. I just think it's like a really... It is a really cute, whimsical novel, but it also at its heart deals with a lot um, of issues concerning the imagination and what we sometimes can create in our own world for ourselves when the things that should be there, in this case, a parental figure, aren't there. An African literature recommendation. For this one, I'm going to say Out of Darkness, Shining Light by Fatina Gappa. I read this one in the summer, and this is a book about the people who carried David Livingston's body out of Africa when he died, like the people who were attending him. Um, if all those people like his cook, um, this very religious man who's following the group, and it's just like so well researched. I think I read somewhere that 10 years of research went into this book, so um, definitely out of darkness shining light. Ooh, this one was really hard. This is a book for your very last day on earth, and like personally, I think you know what I'm gonna say. It's gotta be Rilke, doesn't it? Um, I think I would pick Duino Elegies and the Sonnets to Orpheus, um, perhaps, because the first half is like a call like, how do I live? Um, and then the sonnets, which is um, sonnets that accompany the Duino Elegies are like, okay, this is how you live, or this is how you can go about it, or this is how you can think about it. It's just really beautiful as well. Rilke is my f favorite. Um, just anything by him, honestly, but I think this would be a particular punch for your last day on earth and just a nice companion as well. Okay, someone with like a realistic love story. So I'm gonna say From Little Tokyo with Love. I love this book so much. It was such a good portrayal of just two people meeting and then becoming friends and then falling in love, but they also are facing so many other things in their life. This isn't technically a romance. We are following our protagonist, Rika. She has a lot of anger issues. And when one day she thinks she sees her mother that she has never known, has never been a part of her life, she goes on a chase to find her mother. And along the way, bumps into this famous movie star named Hank Chen in Little Tokyo, who's there for like the parade and stuff. And then they began this adventure all around Little Tokyo, like coming to terms with their identity, coming to terms with their family, um, but also like falling in love with each other in like a very real, this book just felt so real in every single aspect ever, the setting, the people. Hank is dealing with a lot of anxiety. Rika has her anger issues and it was just really beautiful and really, really nice. And just like the way that people responded to each other, I'm like, yes, like this feels like something people would say to one another. It's not those like kind of cliche, you know, you have an argument or you say something that someone doesn't like and they just run away. <laughs> it wasn't one of those kind of immature um, books. It was one with like people who were like, yes, this is how I'd want to respond in these situations. And it was just very compelling, very sweet, very important. And I love this. A book to start with if you want to get into Egyptian history. So this one might seem a little bit silly, but um, when I was little in my elementary school library, we would have these books. I don't know if anyone recognize, recognizes these. Um, it's part of the Cultures of the Past series. So this is the Ancient Egyptians by Elsa Marston. Um, and we would just go and flick through these on our library classes. Everyone would just absolutely run to these books. It was like a mad race. Sometimes got a little violent to see who could grab them first. But then I saw this at a thrift store. I picked it up and I actually like read it instead of just looking at the pictures when I was little. And it's actually a really good resource if you are wanting to see, if you're interested in pursuing um, whether that's education or just a hobby or more reading into the ancient Egyptians because it actually covers a pretty good base of things from like um, the religion, the time period, the history, the culture, um, everything like that. It goes into, you know, a few sensational things, but it is actually like a really, really good 
resource with a lot of good information and it'll give you like a really good starting point on stuff that you just want to maybe check out for yourself so this is actually pretty good it's short i think it's pretty inexpensive so yeah a book that'll make me stare at a wall for a while after i finish it definitely leave the world behind by Ramana Lam. This book still got me staring at walls. One that reminds me we aren't bound to a physical and earthly existence. I recommended this in my last 100 Rex video, but I have to, again, the dark interval, if you are experiencing anything, which we all are, but like grief, sorrow, if you're just feeling down, if you want to be reminded that the physical isn't everything and won't ever be everything, then this is just incredible. Someone like a dark fantasy with strong female characters. I'm not gonna lie, I really hate that term. Anyway, I'm not gonna go into it in this video, but a book that will 100% um, help you out is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. This has got to be pro- oh, is it my favorite fantasy of the year? I just read book one. This is phenomenal. It's grimdark fantasy. We're following Mia, who is an assassin. Enough said. Someone said Game of Thrones, but make it less lengthy. Um, a book I have on my TBR shelf is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. I've heard so many people love this so, so much, and it is a little bit shorter definitely than the Game of Thrones books. I checked, so try this one out. Someone requested so many Taylor Swift versions that I think at this point I need a whole video. I read the synopsis of this book and I started reading it a little bit, and this just totally reminded me of the request which is um, Taylor Swift's Evermore, the song, not the album. I'm gonna say How Do You Live by Genzaburo Yoshino because this is about um, a young boy named Copper and he's like, just like, how do you, how are you supposed to live in this world when there are like so many things out there, there's pain um, and there's just so much, there's just so much. And that's what Evermore makes me feel like, how are you supposed to, how are you supposed to exist when there is so much? Um, and so much pain as well. Someone requested Dark Academia All Girls Boarding School. Um, so this one absolutely came to mind. This is The Furies by Katie Lowe. It is both of those things, so. Something like Murakami. So I'm guessing you want magical realism, some weirdness in there, um, maybe some romance and stuff. So definitely Marquez. I already recommended 100 Years of Solitude. Oh my God. <laughs> I already recommended 100 Years of Solitude in the last one, so now I'm gonna say Love in the Time of Cholera. This is absolutely so gorgeous. Okay, here we are again. <sighs> that little town street. Okay, Sad Girl Autumn Book that makes me feel like all too well, 10 minute version. <sighs> That's a big request. That is a masterpiece that deserves a few masterpieces, so I'm actually gonna give you two options. Um, and I'm gonna explain them. Both of these options are classics just because I feel like they really take the time and the beautiful language to explore relationships and stuff like that. Um, that All Too Well does. All Too Well is just a freaking masterpiece. But the first one is Far From the Madden Crowd by Thomas Hardy. In this one, we have a woman named Bathsheba and she is, she is a pretty independent woman of her times. Um, she's living on a farm. She's basically trying to run it herself. She doesn't really want any relationships, but then all of a sudden this man named Sergeant Frank Troy comes into her life, absolutely like sweeps her off her feet. Frank Troy just, I think he is the book character that reminds me of Jake Gyllenhaal. There are just so many parallels for me in their relationship though, because like it starts off really great. They're like going through that like honeymoon period. Um, and then she slowly starts to learn more and more about him. Um, there is like multiple relationships in his past that kind of echo the all too well song and their relationship just starts to go downhill and downhill. And it just, I don't know, there's so many different things in it that remind me like specifically of the song. It's a little bit eerie actually. Um, I believe he's also older than her as well. I'm not sure by how many years, but yeah, definitely Bathsheba and Troy's relationship in here definitely gave me all too well vibes and then just a general book that i think encompasses that song oh, this is like one of the most painful books ever it's wuthering heights i just the absolute anguish and torment and just like the missed opportunities the relationship that didn't work out but you still feel it so many years later that it like comes back it literally comes back and like all too well just is all about like memory and how you can't let it go like you remember it all too well um, and those sentiments are so strong in Wuthering Heights that like 
even if your lover has died, they come back and haunt you as a living ghost. All right, 37, a fantasy romance like Akatar that I think it's actually, that I think it's actually good with <laughs> the good balance between action and steamy. Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. Absolutely unhinged sci-fi for my dad. Um, ask him to try out The Armies of Those I Love by Ken Liu because this was absolutely crazy. Number 39, a philosophical book about love. I'm so sorry, I just, this one just fits so perfect. Can't be anything else. It has to be the symposium. That is literally what this is. So give her a go. A book with characters who become your best friends. It's gotta be Harry Potter. It's gotta be Harry Potter. Like I feel like these people are my best friends. One would like set by the sea, but not strictly a summer read. So for this one, I'm gonna recommend Fall on Your Knees by Anne-Marie McDonald. This one is set in stormy, um, Cape Breton Island off the coast of Nova Scotia. This is a family saga, but it's definitely not like summer, summery weather. You know, there's a lot of storms. There's, I mean, look at this cover. Yes. Someone would like a book about King Arthur. The one I have on my shelf here, I haven't really heard too many reviews about this, honestly, but this is Half Stick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. And this is a retelling of um, Arthurian legend featuring King Arthur. This has become such a big trend recently, so maybe try this one out. Okay, 43, a mystery where the investigator isn't a detective or a police officer. So many people have loved this. I hated this, but I'm still gonna say The Maidens by Alex Michaelides because the investigator is just a woman who should not be doing what she's doing. Someone would like a book like Red Dead, like Red Dead Redemption 2, um, which is about cowboys disappearing, right? Um, I did a lot of research for this one and I came up with All the Cowboys Ain't Gone by John J. Jacobson. That sounds like a fake name. Um, but this is about like the son of one of the last cowboys. And now he's like calling himself the last cowboy. It's about him kind of wanting that age back. Number 45, Revenge Drives the Plot. I had to go with Greek tragedy because the amount of revenge and the scale of revenge, I just feel like you don't get a match anywhere else. So I'm gonna say Euripides, Medea. Someone would like a cozy magic book that doesn't get too dark or creepy. I'm gonna say one that I just read, which is Snow and Rose by Emily Winfield Martin. This is so cozy. Um, it takes you throughout the four seasons. It's also illustrated. It's not too dark, it's not too creepy. There's a little bit um, of magic and darkness in here because it is a retelling of Snow White and Rose Red, but gorgeous. Someone would like dark royalty core that isn't cringe and has good romance, but also a plot. So for this one, I'm gonna say Poison Study. I read this a few years ago, and this is about someone who becomes a royal taster for um, a commander or a prince or something. There is romance, there's plot, and it is pretty dark because she is like being poisoned every single day. Someone with like Japanese mythology that is set around the feudal era. So on my shelves right now, I have Shipwrecks by Akira Yoshimura. Uh, this is set in medieval Japan and it does involve mythology as well. It is also Gothic. There's a lot of Gothic um, elements and mystery and stuff like that. So definitely try out Shipwrecks. Someone would like a book to read at the beach. Sea themes, so for this one, I definitely chose something a little bit lighter involving water and i'm gonna say malibu rising by taylor jenkins reed because yes i mean look at this quintessential beach summer all right almost halfway there someone wants to know a book that makes me want to move into a cottage for me that's 100 heart of the fae by emma ham also one of my favorite romance books of the year just such a nice slow fantasy that makes me want to run away into a cottage. Someone would like a book that feels like a Studio Ghibli film. I honestly felt like Pan's Labyrinth. Um, I listened to this one this year. Felt like a Studio Ghibli film. A series that gets better as it goes on, I'm gonna say Cinder by Marissa Meyer. This whole series, what is this called? I forget what this series is called. The Lunar Chronicles, so good. Not a very well-known book that I think deserves a lot more credit is definitely Untold Night and Day by Beiswa. I gave this five stars. I just, oh my gosh, I've hardly not, I really haven't seen that many people read it, so definitely this one. A book that I thought was going to be really bad, but ended up being amazing. This one is funny because Great Expectations was my first Charles Dickens, and my whole life until I read this book, I thought I was going to hate Charles Dickens. I was like scared of him. I did not like him. 
um, but this was wonderful and it is now my favorite Dickens book. A Japanese literature recommendation that I have is definitely The Wind Up Bird Chronicle, also by Murakami. This book is just, I need to reread this. I really, really want to reread this as soon as possible. It's also beautiful. 56 is a German classic. So I'm just gonna pick the last German classic I read, which is The Turnip Princess and Other Newly Discovered Fairy Tales, because this is a collection of fairy tales that were discovered in Germany. Um, they're collected from the Upper Palatinate region in Germany, and it was just really illuminating. Something that will make me feel like I'm alone in a lighthouse. To the lighthouse. Um, a coming of age with Japan as the background. Where are you? Here you are. Um, I've heard that Anything by Banana Yoshimoto is coming of age, and so I'm gonna say Kitchen. This one's nice, I like this one. A classic that has the enemies to lovers trope. I absolutely feel like Emma by Jane Austen does, like between Emma and Mr. Knightley, like I just really love that relationship and it reminds me of like, you know, the modern enemies to lovers trope. The cutest book that I have on my shelves. I think that award definitely goes to Everyone's an Alien Bin when you're an Alien Bin 2. This is about a little alien who comes to Earth and meets all of the animals here. 61 was just dragons, dragons, dragons. I recently lent this book out to my mom, but definitely Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Something that will make me feel very single. I'm gonna say this is how you lose the time war. This is about two women who form a relationship over like the course of like a time war. Like they're traveling back and forth in time and like the way that they communicate to each other, like the connection that they have is just such beautiful writing. It just makes you feel so alone. A cozy book set in a hotel that is not a castle in the clouds. I will say a castle in the clouds, but for people who have read this, I freaking love this book. I'm gonna say Winter House because this is the next snowy hotel book that I have on my TBR. I really wanna get this. This promises to be kind of something like this, I'm hoping, so maybe try out Winter House. Um, a Russian classic. I read Turgania for the first time this year and I would highly recommend trying him out. So this is Fathers and Sons. A cute love story with a character that plays the cello. The only one that comes to my mind is If I Stay. I read this in high school. Yeah, this is the only one I can think of. A book that makes me want to live in Russia. I didn't like this book, but this book did make me want to live in Russia and that is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden because it involves a lot of Russian mythology. This one is a cozy winter book with a romance side plot. I'm gonna say The Winter Duke because this is another one I have my eye on. I've like been researching relentlessly for cozy winter books with romance. Um, and this one sounds amazing. It's about our character. Um, she has a pretty abusive family, but her family is also the royal family. And so she lives in the castle, which is like on an icy peak. Um, and then all of a sudden she inherits like everything. A book where the house is one of the characters Definitely White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. A book for when you want to delete all your social media and disconnect forever. The Year of the Hair by Arto Pasolina. Someone wants to know if I loved Twilight, what should I read? Ah, where is it? Oh my gosh, is it not here? Okay, I totally thought I had this book here, but it's Shiver by Maggie Steve Otter. Um, this to me was like the superior Twilight. I am moving, this one just says, I am moving to Canada. So I shall recommend you a Canadian book. I'm gonna say, Can You Hear the Nightbird Call by Anita Brabadami. Oh, this is so good. And it also illuminates a tragedy and disaster that neither Canada nor India really ever took responsibility for or recognized, which was the explosion of the Air India Flight 182 um, that happened in 1985. And so this chronicles like that in different um, women's lives, like in generationally, if that makes sense. So brilliant. And this one's really specific and something immediately came to mind. This one is a book that follows several characters, each of which feels like a chess piece competing in one game. Definitely gonna say the Atlas Six by Libby Blake. This one is about six people competing in like a game essentially, so that one. Someone would like something for struggling 20-somethings trying to figure out their lives. So I'm gonna say Days of Distraction by Alexandra Chang. This is a 24-year-old woman who basically just like 
restarts her life by moving, quitting her job, and also taking on a whole bunch of different things. This one was so hard and I wish there was more like good food fiction because someone wants a gripping book that revolves around food and cooking. Most of the ones that I thought of were romances and so is this one because this one is called the cozy tea shop in the castle this is about a woman who bakes relentlessly she is like a kind of a professional baker and she decides to open a tea shop in a castle um to kind of restore it and it's kind of like a tourist attraction so i'd give this one a shot it wasn't the best book but like it definitely gave me those like really good baking vibes a book with a cat Definitely The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulikov. <laughs> when I was little, I used to talk to trees. What should I read? A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. A book that makes me feel like I'm the most dangerous person in the world. I still want to say Nevernight. Can I do this twice? I'm going to say Nevernight again. Um, a fantasy with a really cute romance subplot. The Girl Who Drank the Moon. A book where art features prominently the latest one that I got is Blue Period by Tsubasa Yamaguchi. I also just started watching the anime, like I, I'm just on um, episode one, but so many people have loved this and I am gonna start this like very soon, so Blue Period. Someone like a romance that highlights the deaf community and so I'm gonna say, oh, it's also a manga and it is called A Sign of Affection. Um, I've heard so many people speak so highly of this, so definitely check this one out. A book where the setting is very moldy, something like Mexican Gothic. I have been searching so much for something like this as well, and recently I've gotten so many recommendations to check out Jeff Vandermeer's work, specifically Annihilation, Born, and there's another one that has like a mushroom on the cover, but maybe anything by Jeff Vandermeer, because that's where I'm gonna look. Someone would like something melancholic and character driven where not very much really happens. Okay, I'm gonna say Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jodorowsky because this is very character focused. It's set in Poland and not that much actually technically happened. You're just very much following the two characters. It's about two boys who fall in love in the 1980s in Poland when the party is in power um, and yes very devastating. Somebody wants a book so terrible it's actually funny or entertaining. This one is absolutely perfect. This is like the worst book I've ever read and that's Tantalize by Cynthia Lytic Smith. This is awful, um, so awful that it just made me laugh the whole way through. Someone with like wholesome Asian historical fantasy, so I'm gonna say The Library of Legends by Janie Chang. I read this this year and this is like really, this is really good. You follow this class um, of students who are hiking across China trying to save basically these ancient scrolls or it's called the Library of Legends. It also features a lot of mythology and relationships and friendships um, and there is some serious stuff going on too but at the end of the day it's like all about people's connections. 86 is gothic but also romantic and kind of toxic um, to read while raining. So I'm gonna say Gothicana because I, I wanna get my hands on this book. This is a dark academia romance, um, also with mysteries, some spooky vibes. So hopefully this will be perfect. Little Red Riding Hood retelling. That is like all I ever look for. It's one of my favorite fairy tales. And I think I finally found a good one because I'm reading For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. This is so good. Number 88, someone requested following an immortal being, exploring change, mortality, and humanity, but also has a plot. I loved this series when I was younger and I probably still would. It is, the first book is The Alchemist by Michael Scott or the series is called The Immortal Secrets of Nicholas Flamel. This is so good. This follows a series of immortal beings that like actually existed either in history or folklore. So, oh, so good. Number 89 is just pirates. So I'm gonna say Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. Something with a vivid ball scene. It's the Phantom of the Opera. This probably has the most vivid ball scene that you could ever think of. It's great. <laughs> it's a pretty good book. Someone would like a book where a character has facial scars and is insecure about it, um, but wants to accept it and move on. I'm gonna say Frostblood by Emily, no, Ellie Blake, um, because one of the characters in here, Arcus, has a lot of facial scars and he has a really like cool journey um, with his acceptance of those scars. The scariest book I've ever read personally is House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieluski. E. A book that includes recipes or food content, but that's not a cookbook. Ah, oh, this one is so perfect. This is Kitchen Princess by Natsumi Ando and Miyuki Kobayashi. Um, this one comes with recipes. Wait, let me show you. Let me prove it. This one comes with recipes. 
Um, and it's also a story about a girl who is baking her way to find her true love. Something about dreams or people who travel on dreams. The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. Um, Woman in STEM representation. The Three Body Problem by Sisson Liu has a lot of women who are physicists, astrophysicists, um, just a lot of crazy stuff like that. And it's also like a super book. A book that has the same vibes as A Great Gatsby Summer Party. So this one I started in the summer and it definitely does. I just wasn't in the mood for it. And that is A Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood because this is also historical fiction. Definitely gives so many Great Gatsby vibes. So yeah. A book to read after a near death experience. I'm gonna say Before I Fall by Lauren Oliver. I read this in high school and it's about a girl who keeps reliving like the day that she died to like change it or like to evaluate her life. Um, and I think it made me cry. Like it was actually very impactful. A fantasy from the villain's point of view. We definitely need more of these, but I've heard such good things about Master of Sorrows by Justin T. Call. Um, this is set from the villain's point of view. It's also like his origin story and stuff like that. So maybe check this one out. Number 99 is books about witches and feminism. I personally did not like this book, but maybe you will. And that is The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This is set in a Puritan village where we are following this girl who has basically been cast out. As you can imagine, it does involve witches. It's also supposed to be a dark feminist fantasy. So there you go. Number 100, we have Academic Rivals to Lovers. This one is also in my audiobooks hold right now, and that is not here to be liked. This is about a guy and a girl who are competing. Um, I believe in a, like a school contest or something, but they're essentially academic rivals. A book about AI, preferably where they don't turn evil. Um, he, She, and It by Marge Piercy is about a woman who falls in love with the AI who is protecting um, her like village, her town. And it's just, oh, it's actually so good as well. Book, I love this one, 102, a request for a book with the, why can't I never say this word? eccentricity of the Weasley family's home. This one I definitely have to say Castle in the Clouds by Kirsten Gear because this one blends so many different genres like the Weasley house blends just like things sticking out things sticking out things and just stacking on top of one another and also it is set in a hotel that is so quirky so fun it has a whole bunch of different things going on. Number 103 is Phantom of the Opera Vibes. I'm gonna say 50,000 Leagues Under the Sea because this one really surprised me. It gave me a lot of Phantom of the Opera vibes because like the Phantom, there's a character in here that kind of mirrors the Phantom in that he has removed himself from society. It's a little bit ridiculous. It also deals with a lot of the same themes of like humanity um, and exiles and stuff like that. Okay, next we have a book with a character that works in IT. I could be wrong, but I remember reading The Kiss Quotient. I DNF this by Helen Wong, but I'm pretty sure Stella in here, who is our protagonist, I'm pretty sure she works in something to do with IT. Number 104, a Mexican author that inspires me to travel to their country. The Iliac Crest might be my favorite read of the year so far. We will have to see, but Cristina Rivera Garza was just, this was beautiful. It also centers around a famous Mexican writer. Just everything about this. I loved it so much. And finally, the last one, uh, number 105. The request is a book for when you are in love with your biology teacher. I don't know. This is the only thing that came to mind. This is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. Um, and this is kind of about, I don't think he's a teacher. We're following a third year PhD candidate all of oh no he is a professor adam and they start like this fake dating trope that eventually blossoms into a romance i think so that is that oh my gosh thank you so much for sending all those in i got so many more so maybe i'll try to make something else with this but this was so much fun i hope you guys found what you're looking for if not feel free to drop something in the comments and maybe we can all try and help you find your specific book recommendation answer you with something that will fit your request and yeah thank you so much for 200 Okay, um, 200,000 of you guys, that's incredible. And um, yeah, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, I shall see you so, so soon with something new.